Hello guys and welcome back to the Flutter tutorial. So far we've been having a single screen inside our application. So today we will start creating multiple screen inside our app. So first things first, in the inside the main function, we have run app, inside it we have material app with home, a stateless widget called home. Inside the stateless widget we've only having the build method, inside it we are returning a scaffold with an up bar, text and a center title. Inside the body, we are having center, then column, main axis alignment dot center. Inside the children of the column, we are having only text with a size box and elevated button. So to get this started, what I will do now, I will start separating the code from main dot dart class. So to do so, I will go to the lib folder, then right click it, click new, and click dart file. Let's call this file home. Then go to the main again and cut everything related to the home widget so I will cut everything from here and go back to the home and paste it here we are having some errors so to fix these errors we have to import flutter material so we type import flutter material as the first option here click on tab to import it and go back to the main to import this file so we are having an error for the home it's not recognizable here so we can fix that by clicking here and click on this button and import home.dart or package routing example slash home.dart or we can type it ourselves but this time let's import it from here so now if we rerun our application nothing actually will happen it will stay as is so our next step now is to create the second page so i will come to the lib folder again right click it new then click on dart file and let's call this second page and hit enter here i will create a stateless widget as well and let's call it second page and hit enter to to get rid of this errors we have to import flutter material so let's import it flutter material all right instead of returning container we want to return a scaffold so we can have an app bar and some content inside it so i will return a scaffold inside it i will return an app bar app bar with a title and let's keep the title as is const text and let's say routing example with the center title to true and in the body let's also have a center then inside the center child with column then inside the child main axis alignment to center and inside the children let's have first const text the text would say second page and let's give it a little bit of style text style let's have font weight to bold and font size to 22 and color the colors with the black okay and let's have size box with height 20 and let's have also elevated button and let's keep the only pressed for now empty and the child text saying const text go to first page okay and let's style this a little bit so it doesn't appear like this let's have for example colors uh, give it a red color so let's have a style button style inside the button style i'll say background color material state property dot all colors dot red okay and let's save it now nothing will happen and let's try and put this in the main instead of the home so i will type second page and it imported itself so let's go to the run tab and rerun our application to see if it works okay so here's our second page so what will i do now i will keep the home and go back to the home and start implementing the navigation but before we do so 
I want to highlight something. In Flutter, we have a data type called map. It's like a dictionary. We can have a property and a value for the property. For example, to create a map, we can say map. Then inside here, we can first give the property type. Let's say it's a string, then comma. And here we can type the value type. We can have it, for example, string as well. We can have it dynamic. We can dynamic. We can have it, for example, as object. We can have it w whatever we want. So let's have it dynamic for now. And let's call it map. So to give this map value, we have to type curly brackets. So inside here, we can first give the property. So to give the property, it's a string. So we have to have single quote. And inside it, let's say this is a name. Then here we have to pass the property value. So it's dynamic. So I can give it, for example, a number. I can give it Boolean. I can give it uh, an object. I can pass whatever I want. But for a name, I would pass also a string. So let's say this is mark. And to have another property, we can type here comma. Then inside here, we can pass the other property. So I will type date of birth for other property. And the date of birth, let's say it's 1990. And don't forget a semicolon here. To access this map, we can use square notation. So I can say, for example, map. Then inside here, I can say name. So let's try to print this. I will type print and cut it paste it so if i rerun our application we have to see mark inside here and we do and you will see why i explained the map before i start talking about navigation in a while so to create a navigation we must go to the main then after the home we can type routes so before i continue typing if you read this it's a map with a string then a widget this widget is having a function inside it we are we must pass build context so i explained map because routes uses maps so let's have routes then we have as i said before we have to type curly brackets then inside here we can give routes for example this is slash means this is a home route so we have as i said this is a function and we have to pass build context we can say build context context then this is a function so here we have to pass the the return of the function so this this should be home as well and to get rid of this error just remove the constant because this is no longer a constant okay and we can pass the constant here instead okay so if i save this now we might have an error this error is basically because this is a home and we are also passing home inside here. So let's try it. If I rerun our application, the app might crash and it does. So to get rid of this error, we have two options. We either comment this and rerun our application or we can change this route and keep the home. For example, if I keep the home, then change this to first and rerun our application now we wouldn't have any error okay so now let's have our second route i will type slash second and this would take also context then const second page okay so now we have our routes ready to use so what i will do now i will go back to the home screen then inside the only pressed method I will navigate to the second page so what we can type we can type navigator then dot here we have multiple options to select from first I will type push name push named would take a context and a route name so the route name we wrote it is a slash second so let's type slash second and don't forget the semicolon as well and let's rerun our application now to test it if it's work okay so now if I click on this button, go to second page, it has to take me to the second page. So let's click it and it does. We are finally navigating from first page to second page and we are having multiple screens inside our application now. 
as you can see we didn't implement anything for the back arrow but it appears itself why it appears because this is a scaffold and we navigated to this page so if i click on this back arrow it has to take me to this home screen let's try it if i click on it it will take me to here and if i click on go to next page it will take me to the next page and if we click on this button go to first page nothing actually will happen so when we click on this button it will navigate us back to the first page and if we click on this it will take us to the next page but sometimes we don't even have a scaffold inside our screen so if i go to the second page and comment this scaffold sorry then rerun our application click on this go to next page we don't we can't go back now this button doesn't do anything we can go back if we click in this back button but we have to make it clear to the user how to go back so what we will do we will do we will create navigation inside here when we click in this button but first let's return this uh, bar then go to the only press for this elevated button then also say navigator dot push named as well give it the same context and the name the route name here we said it's a slash first add semicolon then save it and here we are having a scaffold and we are having the back button and if we click on this button go to first page it will take us to the first page as well if i click on it it takes me and if i click on go to second page it will take me as well let's click on this go to first page now and as you can see if you haven't noticed let me show you something we also here have a back button now so this is wrong why is this wrong first we have two screens but now in the navigation we have multiple instances of each screen and every time for example if i go to second page then from here go to first page every time we click on go to first page you might see in the in the console here it will print mark because in the home screen inside the build method we said print the name so if i go now it's a three so if i go to second page then go to first page it will print mark again so this is wrong because we only have two screens but now we have many instances of each screen and this is that's not how we do it actually so before i show you how we do it let me just explain something the navigation is actually a stack so when we say a stack we have two options inside the stack we have either push or pop so let me just for example this is a stack and this is a list of objects inside the stack first when we said push named here it pushed an object so let's say this is the object and this is the second screen so inside the second page when I said push named as well what it did it actually created a new object of the first page and pushed it as well and every time we click and go to second page go to first page now it will push objects as well but this is wrong so what we need to do since we only have two objects two screens what we will do we will only manipulate these two objects so we either push or pop the pop actually remove item from this stack so when we say pop it will just remove it and go back to the previous object so instead of saying push named what i will do i will just type and pop only takes a constant context sorry so if i but before i rerun our application i just want to show you something when we click on this so here you go you can see the stack here every time i click back we have an object here okay so now if i rerun the application and I click and go to second page now if i click go to first page it will not create a new object and put it in the stack it will actually pop and this back arrow here it actually does the pop job itself so if i click go to first page now it will pop it inside the first page we wouldn't have back arrow here 